Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Tonight we're going to take a look at the 600i. As you guys remember, at the beginning of 317 series, uh, they gave us like a bazillion dollars. They weren't supposed to. They were supposed to give us a couple hundred thousand dollars. And somebody put the decimal point in the way wrong place. And many of us woke up to millions of dollars. And I happened to get on the game the day that it happened. And I went ship crazy and bought a bunch of ships. So I'm trying to get these shown before November. We're already halfway through October, and I haven't done a single ship. Um, but I want to get these shown through before um, we lose them. Because I'm gonna obviously when they patch the game, they're going to reset it. All the money will be gone, and the ships will be gone. So I'm kind of trying to do like a tour series here, kind of a rough tour series. I'm not doing any fancy camera work or anything like that. We're just going to go through the ships and enjoy them. So this is my 600i. Um, it's a ship that... To me, it's a little confusing on exactly what the purpose is. Now, there's a touring model, and this is the exploration model, but this one kind of crosses some touring into it, and it's it's just, to me, it doesn't make sense. You have, like, this luxurious ship for a crew that's supposed to be out doing work, and yet it's, like, all about alcohol and pool and, you know, hanging out in the back of the ship. There goes the elevator. I left it open too long. Um, and so I don't know quite what to make of this ship because it's it's i love it i do it's beautiful inside um but it's just i don't know one of my complaints with the ship to start with from the outside um i think the ship is horrible looking it really is ugly it it looks like peep you know if you guys have ever seen peep in the big wide world uh where they have the little you know they're like very round cartoon characters this this looks like um, the duck from Peep in the Big Wide World, and especially the back end here where it sits. The, this landing gear is the most awkward landing gear I've ever seen in my life. It is just, it's like a fat person from, you know, how they used to make people stand with their feet out. <laughs> like, it's like a fat person with their feet properly. I don't know. And I'm fat myself, so I can talk. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> Yeah, not making fun of fat people. That's that's how I would look if I was standing like that. Kind of like Laurel and Hardy. That's like that was like Hardy right there. And I just, it's goofy. Um, thankfully, the inside of the ship is not quite so goofy. Uh, now, once the gear is up, I think it's a pretty good looking ship. But the the um, I'm trying to get to go to the lower deck. Lower deck. There we go. Um, it's still kind of weird looking, but. Not as weird looking as it looks with the gear down. So we come up into this lower level, and we have a couple things that we're going to look at. We have the entryway, which is really nice, um, but there's not a lot of progression into the ship. You just kind of, here you are. Uh, and th th That's the funny thing, too. This is the other weird thing. Uh, the private captain's quarters, I th I'm imagining that this is the captain's quarters, um, is like right here off the elevator. And then on the other side, we have this totally utilitarian area, which is the cargo bay. Uh, this area here that's marked with gray uh, drops out of the ship. So you can drop this down, put a vehicle on here. This will fit up to an Ursa rover. Now, it's a really tight fit with the Ursa rover, but it does fit. Um, and it doesn't bump anything when you're in there. It, it's an actual fit. So this is probably actually maybe purpose-built for the Ursa rover uh, or something that specific size. Uh, anything smaller than that will fit. The rock will fit, that kind of stuff. But... But up to an Ursa rover. You will not get a Centurion or anything like that in here, but you can get the rover in. Um, we have some weird computer equipment all around. Um, I'm not sure. These look like hangers for guests, maybe, for people coming in. Maybe you'd open this up and people would arrive in their rover or go out in the rover to have fun if you're delivering up uh, people hanging out. But here's the weird thing. So we have crew quarters back here. and This is where we're going to head now. There's an elevator to the upper deck here. Be careful in the elevators when you're quantum jumping. If you're by yourself, you may end up falling out into space, and your ship will just keep going. If you have somebody in the ship, at least they can bring the ship back to get you, But unless you don't have a helmet on, which that's the rule number one about the game currently is you always wear a helmet. This is the crew quarters. And to me, this is very luxurious. Like, this is, you know, obviously most of the... If you go on the other ships, and this is where it gets confusing... There's like an obsidian wall or ceiling. There's all kinds of like, they each have their own TV. There's like a bench area. There's storage underneath. This is a lot of space. Look at all this wasted space. Not necessarily wasted, but like 
and yet no privacy. But they, <laughs> but you have four crew beds here, and they they're look they look pretty luxurious. Like this is like a space yacht, serious, you know. And and why would you put your crew in this? I don't. Once again, if you look at the other ships and their crew quarters, they're all functional, like the MSRs. You know, it's like just a room with stuff in it. But it's not, you know, wood floors. And it's nice, but it's not like this. I don't know. It's kind of a confused message. Like, I would see guests staying in here. Like, if you had a family that you were taking somewhere, they would stay back here. But this is the crew quarters. And um, I can show you why in a minute. We have this back hallway here. Obviously, access to some kind of something. And we got these are marked C1, C2, C3, and C4. Probably closets for each crew member. Or like storage areas for their stuff. Uh, we have a, be a bench here and escape pods for the crew members in case the worst happens. I can't get in there, but uh, and then back here we have the crew bathroom. And here, once again, they're marked with C, which I'm imagining stands for crew. That's why I'm think saying it's like this is definitely crew stuff. Crew one, crew two, crew three, and crew four. Now, the crew gets really nice bathrooms, too. That's another... This, these are the biggest bathrooms I've seen in any spaceship, except for maybe the 890. But this is... These are huge. And you get your own shower. Something interesting about these bathrooms that the captain doesn't even have on the ship. I uh, love the in-use thing. Um, the, ba the toilet is separated from the shower. Most ships have toilet and shower in the same bay. Ugh. You're, like, washing yourself in your own wee-wee. Here, this is just the opposite, yeah. So it's just gross. So this uh, this is nice because you actually have like separated separated areas. So I'm gonna run up to the front of the ship now, but we've seen this area and there you got all the escape pods of the crew area. So this is where the crew lives, and it's really luxurious. But speaking of lugubrious, we have the captain's quarters. <laughs> Come on, uh, which is absolutely the bee's knees, uh, and the captain gets to have. He's got a work desk. He's got a little relaxation area, and they can and hang out. You know, and Captain Picard can hang out here with uh, what's her name, the Crusher Lady. <laughs> they can snuggle and imagine being in love, and also he can write his memoirs. Uh, and then we have uh, this back in the corner. You have you know cool stuff like you know obviously the granite wall stuff, and you have the flower wall over here. And hidden in the corner is his own bathroom, his or her own bathroom. And you have hangers, and you have this, uh, like, towel rack, and, you know, just a very luxurious bathroom for a single person here. Um, obviously, all of the stuff that a captain would use. And, uh, once again, the combo shower slash toilet. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Keep them separated, please. But that's how they are. And that's, I mean, obviously, it's space. You have to, you know. But then you have the bed, which is up here, that looks out over wherever you've landed. And this, to me, is awesome. Like, this, I would love this. And I, if I was to have a ship where I could just have one thing in it, I would have a smaller ship that has a bed that has a view like this. <laughs> and maybe some chairs, you know, just like a lounge. And that's it. And then the thing upstairs, that could be my home ship, you know. Maybe in the back it would have a, a bay for a buggy, and that's it. But nothing else. You can make a lot smaller ship that's this nice uh, for a single person. But this is a cruise ship. All right, so let's head upstairs to the upper deck. And I'm going to take a look real quick into the captain's, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, bridge. So we have the escape pods for the bridge right here. And here's the bridge. This bridge is, once again, people complain about this, and I, I don't disagree. There's a lot of wasted space here. All this stuff is like nothing. Um, these are cool, these light panels that you walk on. Ship affords an excellent view for the captain to be able to maneuver. Um, you know, as you look around, it's very open to the sides and top, and so it's a good ship to fly. And if you... Um, Herpicus McDerpington. Uh, and so then we, if you look up, like while you're in the captain's seat, you can look up and see that bar, but you can also see above you. If the if you have hangar doors that open above you, you can look up and, and see if you're clear. Um, so that is nice. These crew seats right now are just gunner seats. One of 
I think the one on the left is the bottom turret, and the one on the top is the, or the one on the right is the top turret, but it could be the other way around. But anyway, each of these controls the turret, uh, so you have that area. Let's go ahead and get out of here. But once again, there's a lot of wasted space here, and people are upset about that. Um, this ship is getting a medical bed in its rework, and we probably will see some of this wasted space going to be used now instead of wasted. Here we have the Grand Globe Room. What, what good is this? I don't know. It just does nothing but it's a globe. And you can walk through it on a glass floor. I don't know if I'd be willing to do that. There's the cargo bay down beneath. But it's cool. It's just like a little veranda or uh, mezzanine. And that takes us into the exploration room. We have two seats for the other two crew members. So you have five people all together. you got a captain and four crew members. Three of you are up on the bridge. Two of you are back here scanning, doing your work. And that's what this part of the ship is. And now we get confused again because we move into this part, which seems like this is where you would take passengers. Now, maybe as a day travel ship you could use this. That's one thing I was thinking about. Back here is, all, by the way, the armory. Guns and suits of armor for your crew. Um... So I would think maybe during the daytime you'd pick up passengers and take them places with your ship and use this as a, a cruise ship because this has got a lot of seating back here. You could carry 30, 40 people in the back of the ship and serve them. Look at this. So you got a bar, all these drinks. Huge. I mean, the whole thing back, the back half of the ship is a yacht. You know, this is a luxury yacht here. If you look at luxury yachts in the real world, this is what they look like. You got this big surround, you know, with like these rays going back, supports going back like you see on a yacht. Um, one of the weird things to me, though, is that this is backwards. Like the bar, the bartender stands here, reinforced glass, and serves the drinks uh, while the people that are here drinking, they're not looking out into space. They're facing this, I mean, there's a little bit of space above them, but they're facing this wall. Uh, so the bartender gets the view. That seems backwards. I, I, you, I, I, for if it were me, I'd want this whole thing flipped around. I'd want the 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 guests to be looking this way. <laughs> anyway, that's just a pet peeve right there. Uh, we move down to the second level or the mezzanine floor once again. You have a nice big table for drinks, maybe food, and down here we have a sitting area that looks out for people that want to look out the the back of the ship and look out the window. This is great. Uh, and what the captain could do is he could fly low above a planet, flip the ship upside down, and these people would be having an amazing view of the planet's surface. Um, and then they're seating for, I mean, I mean, 20, 30 people could sit comfortably in this area easily. They could be up getting drinks at the bar, hanging out down here, having cocktail hour like at a wedding. You could do a wedding on this ship. There you go. Perfect. Space Wedding Venue. Uh, so here we go. We have a movie theater for those of you that want to see, you know, Forrest Gump or something ugh, while you're um, watching, while you're flying in space. I'd much rather look out and see space, but you can see Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. I hated that movie. I'm sorry. Some people just love it. Most people love it. I'm one of those very few people that think it's like one of the worst movies ever made. I did not get Forrest Gump. Anyway, here is the pool table uh, with all white pool balls. So no matter what you do, you're scratching. Uh, it must be a different kind of space pool uh, with the origin label on it. Very nice. Some seating. So for the people that don't really care for watching space or maybe get space sick, this is a place for them to go hide out and pretend like they're not flying around in space. Um, and then we, we also have a luxurious eating area for the crew and staff and visitors. What, what a better way to have a midnight snack than here in this. Look at the lighting. Like, the lighting is, like, so nice and cozy here. It makes me just want to have a hamburger that's ketchup, and that makes me, oh, I'm hungry now. Sorry to disturb you, but is the bedroom door up? Uh, yeah, so that makes me want to have a hamburger or hot dogs and some kind of cheap food, but delicious. Uh, but, yeah, this is a really nice area. And look at that view. And they get the little wall over there. This is very much like a, you know, like a restaurant. It's just, it's really, really cozy and nice and warm feeling. Obviously, you can cook here. There's going to be drinks that you can get, um, like regular drinks, not alcoholic condiments and food. And I don't know, this looks like some kind of food dispenser machines. 
So you'll probably be able to make food here, um, like luxury food. And we have a big refrigerator over here. Cool stuff. This is to me. This is like really what makes the ship kind of neat. But once again, <laughs> what's the purpose? I'm still confused on that. Uh, are we uh, exploration vessel or are we a luxury touring vessel? And that, to me, the touring pro model probably would be the one that I would go for because this is too confusing. Though I do like the fact that you you know have luxury. You live in the ship as your home. Uh, now. I will say, if I were to put this up against the Carrick, and I know most of you are going to disagree, I would much rather have this ship than the Carrick. Uh, it's so much more luxurious and comfy and unhomelike. So to me, that makes me want this ship as opposed to the Carrick was just kind of cold and lonely and sad feeling inside. It dark. Scary. I don't know where that goes. This, oh, there we go. There's a bay back here. Okay. Here's one of the module bays. If we get attacked and things get broken, this is where you're going to come. If you want to upgrade your engines or your, you know, shields, this is where you're going to go. We've got engineering panels. I don't think any of these open right now. No, they don't yet. This is the master open button. These are probably, that's probably the jump drive or something big. There's some huge device back there that opens and closes. Um, utility panels. You have to repair these when the ship gets attacked. Another large device. And I believe we have a matching uh, room on the other side because everything's duplicate in here. Let's see what's over here. Yeah. Yep. And then there we go. once again, you get this room. Caution clear. And we have another, pretty much the mirror image of the other one. Yeah, and you have all the panels and stuff. So this is where you're going to come to repair your ship if you get into a fight and it doesn't go well. What they're talking about for this game in the future is that you will not... Ships aren't just going to blow up. Um, it'll take somebody a really long time to blow your ship up if that's what they're going after. To disable it, they'll be able to do that. But to blow it up, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of resources, maybe more torpedoes than they have on board. <laughs> it'll make it not worth it, basically. But if they want to pirate you and they want to disable your ship and then board... And let's say you were able to fend off the boarding party that's attacking your ship, um, and then you are, you know, have time to repair it. You have an engineer on board. You can repair your ship and limp over to a space station and get it fixed up. So I think that's the idea in the future. You'll actually have time to decide whether you're going to abandon ship or whether you're going to, you know, board. Maybe there's a containment leak like in Star Trek where, oh gosh, the whole thing's going to go down. We have 10 minutes to get this fixed. You know, Spock sacrifices his life and we all live. Or we don't have that happen and we have to leave the ship, um, and that's when you abandon ship. But you have time to – ships are not just going to blow up anymore. So anyway, that is uh, um, something that we're going to do. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take this ship for a little cruise. Uh, I'm going to run down to uh, – we're over Hurston right now, so I guess we'll just go to Hurston. It's a pretty sweet-looking ship, though. I mean, you got to admit, it's it's cool. Once you're going, <laughs> on the ground it looks like poo-poo, but once you're flying, it's not bad. It's kind of a neat, weird-looking ship. I still think out of all their ships, the 300i is the best-looking. But this ship is its pretty sweet. It's a pretty hefty ship, too, though. <laughs> all right, we're on our way down to the planet's surface. To do what? I don't know. Yeah, but once again, aside, I mean, you know, the other thing you could do with this is if you have, like, people that want to go somewhere, like a group of people, this this is a good ship for that. Like, they can have fun while you're cruising around. But since <laughs> none of the food or drink are accessible, really, it's more just for role-playing. Um, so I don't know. I mean, <laughs> now, people do use these for, I think, high-risk targets because it does have, I mean, look at this, giant guns. I think they're size seven, six, six or seven, something like that. Uh, and then you have two more turrets that pop out. Um, so, you know, you can you can get pretty aggressive with this ship as far as like war goes if you're attacking big ships. Uh, but you probably should have some sort of escort with you because, <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, if you're by yourself, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> 
I wonder if eventually we'll actually catch on fire when that happens. Oh, you had a tile loose. <laughs> so here we are at the planet's surface. Cruising along. Happily. Hopefully. And there's some rocks. And trees. And draw distance. There's a rock in the middle of the ocean. As you can see here, with the guests, and I, w I wish I could do this because I can't fly and, you know, look at the same time, but you could flip the ship upside down. And now the guests have an incredible interstellar view of the water and the planet's surface while they're having their drinks and cocktails. Like, a, like an upside down wedding that would be actually fairly disorienting I'm, I'm going to end up in the ocean here in a second <laughs> that's just a good idea the things that you could do with your guests that they probably would enjoy but maybe feel sick while you're doing it but you know it's maneuverable enough that you can get around but once again I just I, there's so many other ships that could do this better honestly the my personal favorite right now for this kind of thing, where you're just kind of cruising and, and sightseeing and, and maybe having people on board that can enjoy the trip, the flight, uh, the 400i, to me, is a better option for this kind of flight. You know, it's it's a, um, it just seems a little bit better suited for, like, low-level luxury flying. But this is cool still. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, but it's expensive. So, I mean, once again, is it worth it? I don't think so. Honestly, this ship doesn't really have a place. But in the long run, once the game becomes what it's supposed to be, then yeah, I think it will be worth it. Uh, and it's a nice luxury vessel, especially if you have a couple of friends that you you know play with frequently. This is going to be a good multi-crew ship. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here's a little flight demonstration. And then we'll be back. enjoyed that flight demo uh, ladies and gentlemen have a great evening be sure to click like thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more of these videos along with many other simulators that we play I do farm sim truck sim flight sim we do all kinds of simulators so would love to see you back on the channel at some point have a great night see you next time
Bye.